Welcome everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you my RUI customizer for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. So many of you may think that RUI is completely hardcoded, but actually there's a way to modify it. You can see I've already made a lot of modifications. I actually made a website to do this for you, since it's very complicated to do it manually. But you can fully customize the colors of the UI, and there's a CSS editor. And you can also inspect like HTML. There's even an entire utility menu where you can access the UIs easily if you're on Android because this look currently only works on PC and Android. Unless you jailbreak your device, that's the exception. Now there's a lot of other stuff. One of the coolest things is if you go into edit world, you can do stuff like disable hardcore mode once it's enabled. So if I was to turn that on and save it, you see it says hardcore. Uh, I can just go back in here and it's not hardcore anymore. You can also disable experimental toggles after they've been enabled. So if I do that, you can see they've actually been turned off. Same goes for the education edition toggle. But you do have to have cheats on to mess with that. It also has the debug tab, which has a lot of really cool stuff. And it even allows you to change your world seed after your world has been created. You can also um, set more game modes. You can set the default game mode to spectator. Or if you want to do something really weird, you can set the default game mode to default. It breaks a lot of stuff. Now you can also change the world type. For example, you can see it says legacy now. That's like the old world where it's like has a very small limit. But you can also go with the Void World, Flower World, or Infinite. The other ones you see here don't actually work, sadly. But Legacy, Infinite World, Flat World, and Void World do work. Yeah, it also allows you to have infinite character limits in all the text boxes. So what that means is, have you ever been making a world name and then been really annoyed when it reaches the character limit and you can't make the name any longer? Well, with this, that's never going to be a problem again. Because you can just make it as long as you want. And this works in all the text boxes, even the seed text box. Another cool feature is this actually allows you to turn your world into, like, a lock template. So if you ever download, like, a world from the marketplace, and it says, like, the template's locked, and you have to unlock it to mess with settings, yeah, you can just do that with the toggle. If I do that... Now some of the options are locked, but you can also just unlock it again too. You can also set your simulation distance to any value between 4 and 12 instead of just multiples of 2. The debug tab also allows you to see like the raw values of all the world settings. Now these ones that say read only, even if you like make the toggles not disabled, they won't actually toggle. They mark them as read only because it doesn't let you change them, sadly. And if you play on PC, you may have noticed that on here, the, the icons aren't white squares. Because on PC, there's this bug where with the RUI, a lot of the icons are just blank white squares. The customizer also fixes that as well. Now, it also has a really advanced console. If I do a Control-Alt-C, and then I type Window. It's very similar to the DevTools console, like in your web browser. It even has a little note about being evaluated upon first expanding. And you can just expand as much as you want. And it won't crash because it doesn't load everything at once. It only loads stuff once you expand it. Now the console also, normally you can't really see any errors or logs that are generated in the ORUI. But the console actually allows you to see them. So if I do console.error and then just a 1, you can actually see the error in the console. There's also other features, such as this small debug overlay in the corner here. It shows you, like, info about your mouse position and movement, and also, like, what keys you have held, or key codes. There's also this debug overlay, which shows you lots of details about an element. Yeah, the customizer also does a lot of other stuff. A cool thing you can do with the CSS editor is make everything extremely saturated. There's tons of other filters too. 
like I could do Q dash rotate and make this into grease. And all of a sudden it just shifts the hue of everything. And I mean like everything. Can also invert it. You can see now everything's inverted. You can also blur everything and do a lot of other crazy stuff. You can even make everything partially transparent. Also, the increased text limit also works in things like Realm Stories, so if you want to post a really long message in Realm Stories, you could. I'm not recommending doing that because you might get banned if you do that. But just letting you know it's it's a possibility. Another feature is you can see the source HTML of the ORUI, as you can see here. Now, I will be adding a lot more to this in the future. This is only version 0.16 that you're seeing here. There's going to be a lot of more stuff as ORUI expands to more menus. I just hope that they uh, make it able to be modified with resource packs in the future. Now I'm going to show you how to actually use the customizer. First, you're going to want to go to the ORUI customizer page of my website, which will be linked in the description. If none of the presets include your current Minecraft version, then you would do step one up here, which means you go into your data folder for your Minecraft and you find the GUI folder in there and you can press it to a zip file and you click import zip file and upload it. Otherwise, if your Minecraft version is in the preset list at the time you're doing this, just click the preset and wait for it to load. Then, if you just want the stuff I just showed you, without any like color customizations or anything, just click Apply Mods. Otherwise, you can click Show Options, and you can see all the settings here. Over here is where you would customize all the colors. Basically, go through all the colors and choose what color you want to replace them with. Any colors you ignore will just be kept as they are. But, for example, if I wanted to replace white, with red, I would do that. And then you can also change some of these options, but I would recommend just leaving them on. Now, once you've chosen your desired options, you can I click Apply Mods and wait until the download button isn't grayed out anymore. And as you can see, it just finished. Then you click Download. Then you just save the zip file somewhere on your device. Once you've done that, you'll um, extract the GUI folder from the zip file and you're going to go to your data folder. Now if you're on Windows, you're either going to need IOBit Unlocker or you're going to need Bedrock Launcher. I would highly recommend Bedrock Launcher as it's much easier to use for this, but if you're already using IOBit Unlocker that works too. I'm going to show you the method for Bedrock Launcher, but you can just look at the instructions here if you're on Android or using IOBit Unlocker. So for Bedrock Launcher, you're going to go to percent app data percent slash dot minecraft underscore bedrock slash versions. You can just copy the path here and then paste it into the URL bar of File Explorer. And that should bring you there. Then you're going to find which one of these folders is for your newest Minecraft version. Now, you can usually do this just by checking the date modified. The one with the highest is probably the newest one, but there could also be preview versions mixed in here, so if you want to double check, just double click on it, click on there, and then click resource packs and look at what the last one says. This is 1.21.71. And then over here, if it says uap.win10.assets, and UAP.assets, then it's the full release. If it says preview anywhere in there, then you're on the preview. This should work for the Minecraft preview as well. But this is my current Minecraft versions folder. Then if I go in the data folder, then you see I have the GUI folder. You, you can either rename this or delete it. So I'm just gonna rename it to GUI underscore vanilla. But first you had to make sure Minecraft closed. And once you've done that, you're going to extract your GUI folder from the zip file you downloaded from the website and paste it in here. 
and then you wait for it to transfer. Once you've done that, you can open up Minecraft. Then once Minecraft is opened up, you can go into the play screen and you can see when I changed the white to red, it replaced all the white stuff with red. So now all the text is red and over here it's red. And if I go in here, you can see I have the debug tab. And remember, you can change, there's lots of things on here that can be changed. I'll be having the ability to replace the textures of these play screen buttons in a future update. But as of 0.16.0, it's you can't do it. But if you want to get notified when I do add that feature, you should join my Discord server, which will also be linked in the description. That was it for today's video. Remember, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.